and welcome back. Uh, just got done doing the uh, discharge test. Uh, just a continuization from the last video where we did the uh, the charge test on this uh, 280 amp hour cell. I did the discharge test on this today, and uh, hopefully that comes in okay. But we were able to pull 278 and a half amp hours out of this cell. And our testing criteria was uh, we put a 40 amp uh, constant current load on it with our cutoff at two and a half volts. So you can see our test ran for six hours and almost 58 minutes, so about six hours and 57 minutes. And we hit our cutoff voltage. It looks to be right about six hours and 51 minutes. Or about yeah, six hours and 57 minutes into that test. Uh, so you can kind of see right here uh, where we started to drop pretty sharply. Look at our voltage curve. And then we hit our cutoff here. Now if we go back, just like you saw in the previous video, if we go back and look at our, our graph, Kind of see where we started here and just to kind of show you again these charge curves on these lithium ion phosphate cells see they kind of go on through go on through hold steady hold steady start to decline a little bit kind of a little bit more a little bit more and you see they kind of hit a hit a, hit an area where they basically kind of fall flat on, fall on their face and they and you see that sharp dip where it stops so just to kind of show you that um, when we're talking about yesterday, trying to use voltage uh, as a sole means to determine your state of charge is um, a little, little bit difficult with these because you can kind of see this flat, just almost flat discharge curve until it gets to the very end. And you saw yesterday on the charge curve was very similar. Uh, peaked up, had a relatively flat charge curve if you remember yesterday when it reaches towards the end of the charge cycle you see that spike in voltage well again your discharge curve almost looks the same relatively flat and then you see a dip in voltage now we did charge this cell at the beginning of this test to 3.65 volts and you can see that our cutoff was two and a half so we we took it to as high and as low as your as a um, lipo 4 cell is rated for and again, it was just to kind of run uh, a test on this one particular cell. What we will be doing for a battery bank is that um, we will be just holding off and doing a max charge of three and a half volts. Uh, and again, a lot of that is uh, just due to helping to take the stress off the cell, as well as um, once again, we'll be, we'll be using a Batrium BMS on the home system. Uh, and we'll be using Batrium's, what they call their long life uh, LiPo 4 setting, which the long mons or the battery monitors that we use uh, will start to kick in and start to dissipate excess capacity out of the battery once the voltage hits above three and a half volts. So as the pack is charging and a particular cell monitor sees the cell hit three and a half volts, it'll start to put up to a two amp load per cell and in an effort to keep that cell from going above our set voltage but at the same time allowing the rest of the cells in the pack uh, to continue to charge if needed and we'll get into a bit more of that when we actually take our two cell packs that you see here once they're completed top balancing and we get our uh, pressure system in place. And by pressure system, uh, we're working on a kind of a small variant of what lithium solar and, um, and other YouTubers have used. I'll put their links in the description below as far as applying a little bit of pressure to these cells. Now there's a lot of debate on uh, whether you should or need to actually compress them, put pressure on them. Um, and the manufacturer does state that adding pressure to these cells uh, will potentially help lengthen their lifespan. 
uh, you make you know, to the tune of you'll get additional charge and discharge cycles out of them. Now the problem with that being when you read the specifications, they're applying a very specific amount of pressure using calibrated equipment. Well, I don't have that type of equipment here. Uh, so the only thing I can do is kind of simulate or at least come up with a guess as far as how much pressure to apply. And I'll bring you back when we get our uh, our test rig in place, or I shouldn't say our test rig in place. I'll, I'll dry fit and show you what we're planning on doing as far as how we're going to apply pressure to these cells. Now, I'm not going to go overboard with it. Um, I am, My plan is to try and apply enough pressure to this battery pack that... You know, it's not too easy to move one of these cells uh, by hand. And when we get that done, we'll bring you back for that. And again, just to kind of bring you back to the charger here, um, it works. It works well. Um, if uh, they get back in touch with me or ever send me the replacement screen for this, I'll bring you back and kind of show you changing that screen out. But at least for the time being, it can be controlled by a computer. And uh, once again, just to kind of restate that, it's nice having um, a specific piece of test equipment that will interface with the PC because you get to see, once again, these nice charge and discharge curves and be able to see the performance of an actual battery uh, rather than just hearing individuals or talk about charge and discharge curves or seeing just a bunch of curves off the internet and uh, it allows you to you know purchase your own batteries and and do your own testing and, and see it for yourself and see it in real time uh, these testers are actually uh, quite affordable they're not too expensive at all yeah you do have to wait a little bit of time for them to come out of china but um, they, they work and i have to admit they work quite well so just to wrap it up this is the same cell we did the charge test on yesterday. Uh, once again, we were able to get 278 and a half amp hours out of this cell uh, with a 40 amp uh, constant current discharge setting. And we had our cutoff voltage at two and a half volts with that test time taking six hours and 57 minutes. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start this battery up on a charge cycle just so it doesn't sit here for a length of time in a discharge state. And uh, we'll bring you back when we um, get those cells into the setup that we're going to use again to apply that pressure. And I'll show you the materials that we're going to use to do that. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.